learn his technique and what he does to make that bottom work so well. So he is committed to it, and he's doing a darn good job of it right now as well. And he may just pass that orange number two for second place here, Vince. Well, Brad Keselowski spotter Joey Meyer just came on the radio, and he said, where Harvick lifts going into one, and where the rest of the field lifts going into one, it's monumental. And that's where he's beating everyone, including the two right now. I think it's just one of those classic, get off of it early, but get back in it hard and heavy when you get when you would come up off the corner. Watch out for the throttle right there. He's just back to start finish. Wow. He's, he's, he's really not using any brake. He got back in it before he got to the middle of the corner. I, I actually thought that our, our uh, sound was up when I first heard that. But no, he's lifting that early. He just isn't using any brake and floating it into the corner. Letting it coast. Coast Man. in. Aside from the drivers who just took tires, he's the fastest car on the racetrack. <laughs> well, don't forget, though, he did. Uh, he was one of the last cars to come on the pit road, so he does have a little bit fresher rubber than some of those around him. I just thought it was amazing how sensitive he is to that car, though. They put a half a round of wedge in that car, and he recognized that right away. Did you do something to my car? He just does whatever it takes to get to the yellow line and stay there, and he, he keeps the left front and left rear on that yellow line longer around the corner than anybody else. He drives off the corner straight. A couple of issues for Denny Hamlin in that 11 early on. After that first run, the crew told him you've got to take better care of the tires. The left rear was cording way too badly for what we need. Also, they had a dash issue. The digital dash went light on Denny for a couple of laps, and then all of a sudden it just came back on. So a disaster averted possibly there as well. Coming to three laps to go to the end of stage one, where the top ten drivers at the end of the stage received championship points. That was a big boost to Kevin Harvick at Daytona, and he is leading this stage from the pole right here. Harvick's led 78 of 81 laps. And his teammate, Danica Patrick's running the high line, trying to stay on that lead lap before this seg uh, stage closes. Now, pit road will close next time by when the leader gets to the start finish line. That's amazing how long he got the throttle and how far he lets that car roll before he picks up the throttle. It looks so easy. It sounds so easy. I promise you, it's a good thing. That is so tough. Oh, shit. Discipline. It's a soul. It's a soul. Orange. Oh, four. Mm -hmm. At the end of the stage, at 85 laps, the top 10 drivers stop racing when they cross the line. The caution comes out when the 10th place car gets to the line because the top 10 finishers in this stage receive points. They don't want to wave that yellow flag until 10th is decided. We see Denny Hamlin go by Kyle Larson. When I think of a track that takes a lot of discipline, not only Kevin Harvick is excellent these types of races, so is Denny Hamlin, and he's showing it. Next time by, the start of a wave, a green and white checkered flag indicating the end of stage one. Here comes Kevin Harvick. Uh oh, checkered Dan flag. Patrick stays on the lead lap, and Jeffrey Earnhardt keeps from losing another lap. Tenth place car is Jimmy Johnson. When he crosses the line, we will see the yellow flag. And that will end stage number one. The pace car will pick everybody up under caution. And then you have the option of pitting. And there's Jimmy Johnson. The yellow flag is out. Kevin Harvick is the stage one winner in the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500.
Porzingis has been in the lead. Raymond Green has gone in the middle of the draw. Draws the foul. And he'll shoot two. Raymond Green has shut down Christoph Porzingis most of the time, despite being only 6'7, 6'8, whereas Porzingis is 7'3. Played me a nice mic. It's been all the time. And he's yeah. given a challenge to physically manhandle him. Even after the first time where Porzingis then said he's made the adjustment, Kevin Green made it personal. He's had problems with him. He's got to meet his force with force and look to be aggressive. And he, he stole the ball from him on the first possession. Of Porzingis, there's the three games that he's played against Golden State. And Green has been his primary defender and has been a real struggle. Plain and simple, Porzingis has got to up his level yeah, of intensity, yeah, yeah. not just against Draymond Green. But if you're a star, mm -hmm. you've got to lead <clears throat> by example. It's got to, your play has to be follow me. And you can't be out competed. You can be beat, but not out competed. Rose hits the two free throws to tie the game. Curry has been in, for him, a mini slump during this trip. Steps way beyond the arc. This fires there. And Anthony the rebound. And Steph Curry this three-game trip, just four of 31, now four of 32 with that miss from three-point range. Curry does a good job stopping Rose, but he goes right back down. And he goes right back down. And he goes right back down. Oh, Green. Coast to coast, Dream on Green. Oh, shit. Last cut by Petrullia. I know that's a person. Sometimes you really it's like you watch Dream on Green in person to see the intensity and tenacity every second that he's out on the floor. And the skill. And to me, I think that stands out as the smart. The both ends of the floor make life so much easier for everybody else because of his Hi. knowledge of the game. Well, Jim Hornacek didn't like something that he saw, so with nine on the shot clock and less than two minutes in, he calls a full timeout. Frank Cleaning Sales Event is here, and it's time to save. 